Our world is full of confusion and perversion when it comes to the subject of love. If you want to understand true love, you must come to know the God who is love. Join Scott Pauley now as we dig into 1 Corinthians 13 and seek to go deeper into the love of God. What is the greatest thing in the world? Is it money? I don't think so. Is it material possession? Is it human relationships? Is it your plans? What is the greatest thing in the world? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13, God himself answers that question. The God of truth tells us. He says, And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. The word abideth here literally means things that last. You see, most things in this world do not last, but one thing will last forever. And that, my friends, is the love of God. Henry Drummond called it the greatest thing in the world. As a matter of fact, I have on my desk now a copy of that classic little book written so long ago. Henry Drummond was a young man used of the Lord. Uh, D.L. Moody said early on he was the most Christ-like young man he'd ever met. And if you want to read something truly wonderful about 1 Corinthians 13 to help you understand the love of God, I would recommend that you read The Greatest Thing in the World. As a matter of fact, there is a, a copy of it on our website that you could download and read for yourself. It's just all about the love of God. Our world is full of the greatest, the greatest athletes, the greatest of all time, they say. Uh, we use the term sometimes so lightly, I think, almost flippantly. The truth is, the closer you get to things that are called the greatest, usually you think less and less of them. Uh, but there is one who is truly great, and that is our God. And the closer you get to our great God, the more you think of Him, because He is truly great. Why is charity, or the love of God, the greatest thing in the world? Well, let me give you several reasons. First of all, it's the greatest thing because it's not a thing, it's a person. Remember what First John says, God is is love. He doesn't just love. It's not what he does. It's who he is. I would say that charity is just another name for Christ. In fact, you can take this list in 1 Corinthians 13 and everywhere it says charity, say Christ and you do it no, no harm. A charity suffereth long, Christ suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not, Christ envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, Christ vaunted not himself, is not puffed up. Uh, charity doesn't behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Christ, that's Christ. How about verse 7? Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. I would say, Christ beareth all things. Christ believeth all things. Christ hopeth all things. Christ endureth all things. Christ never fails. You see, charity is simply the essence of who God is. It is His very nature. So I believe the love of God is the greatest thing in the world because it's not a thing, it's a person. And then, the love of God is the greatest thing in the world because of what makes the other two possible. You see, the Bible couples love here with faith and hope. As a matter of fact, faith, hope, and charity are connected frequently throughout Scripture. These three are connected to one another. Well, why are faith and hope so great? Love is what makes that possible. In fact, in another place, a charity is called the bond of perfectness. See, the object of our faith is a loving God. And the basis of our hope is a God who is love. If you back up to verse number 7, the Bible says of love that it beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. Do you hear the faith and the hope there? I believe the faith and the hope grow out of the love of God. I can trust Him and I can hope in Him because I know that my God is a God of love. It's the greatest thing in the world because it's not a thing, it's a person. It's the greatest thing in the world because it makes the other two lasting things possible. But then it's the greatest thing in the world because it will live longer than anything else. 
The Bible says charity never faileth. Literally, it never has an end. It never comes to the end of itself or is exhausted. How is that possible? Remember what we said first, that charity is God Himself, the God of love. Why is the love of God greater than faith and hope? Because faith will end. It will end someday. We live now by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. But someday, faith will end in sight. Someday, I'm going to see the one that I've trusted uh, without seeing all of these years. Faith has an end. Uh, Hope has an end. I hope now and you hope now. And we rest in that hope. But someday, that hope becomes a reality. That's right. Heaven, which is our hope, soon will be our home, will be there. But love endures forever. It is truly eternal because God is eternal. In fact, I believe that for the rest of eternity, we're just going to spend all of the time that we have forever entering deeper and deeper, as the hymn writer wrote, into the love of God. We're going to live in love forever. The verses that precede the verse we've read today, 1 Corinthians 13, say this, But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I'm known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. You see, I believe that which is perfect is the God of perfect love. And I think the Lord wants to teach us more about His perfect love now, and then we're going to live with perfect love for all eternity. Why? It is the greatest thing in the world. The greatest thing in any family, in any home, is the love of God. Calvary love, sacrificial love. It's not uh, a good home. It's not about what you take out of it. It's about what you put into it. It's not about getting rid of all the junk first. It's about putting the love of God into it. The love of God will push everything else out. It certainly is not about the material things. It's about spiritual things. There's nothing greater in your home than the love of God. Ask the Lord to let your home be a home filled with charity. The greatest thing in any church is the love of God. As a matter of fact, this same letter, 1 Corinthians, we're studying in chapter 13 right now, but if you back up to the beginning of the letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, here's how it begins in verse number 7. I love this truth. The Apostle Paul writes under inspiration of the Holy Spirit to this church. He said, So that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's he saying? He's saying you have it all. You have all the gifts. You have all of the, the good things from God. But then he goes on to say there should be no division among you. He goes on to talk about the love of God. You see, if you have everything in your church, but you miss the love of God, you've missed it all. Jesus said, by this shall all men know you're my disciples when you have love one for another. The thing every church should be known for is that it should be filled and overflowing with the love of God. It's the greatest thing in the world. And then the greatest thing in your life is the love of God. Did you ever notice that the first characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is love? The fruit of the Spirit is love. And then joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Some people have even suggested that all the other fruits really are just uh, outgrowths of the first one. (laughs) That because love is God, that's the great fruit of the Spirit and everything else is produced by that love. Remember they asked Jesus what was the greatest commandment? What, What did He say? Love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Because this is the greatest thing in the world. I want to challenge you this week. We're going to walk through 1 Corinthians 13. Read and meditate on this beautiful chapter. It's not only beautiful, it's deeply convicting. It is the greatest thing in the world. We would like to encourage you to spend some time meditating on 1 Corinthians 13. We all have much to learn and to apply when it comes to the love of God. Visit us at scottpauley.org to download your free copy of Henry Drummond's book, The Greatest Thing in the World. You'll also find many other helpful resources. We look forward to having you with us the next time on Enjoying the Journey.